What's up everyone? So today is finally the day. Version 2.0 of the bot is finally releasing. So uh, in this video, we're going over all of the features of bot 2.0, all of the fixes, all of the updates. Uh, and there's a lot, and there's a lot of exciting things in this update. So uh, the development team that I've recruited have been working very hard to get this update. Uh, there's some huge updates. So for example, the most important and noticeable thing is with version 1.0, right? It worked great in a lot of senses. It showed, you know, what's moving now. One of the only, or one of the main downfalls of version 1.0 is sometimes it would call out plays that maybe are already up too much. And then most of the move is already missed. So basically what the development team and I have done is we built a machine learning model that takes all of the past data, takes all like a ton of variables, market sentiment, it takes like everything and it feeds it through a machine learning model to help us figure out which plays are most likely to be called out for the rest of the day. So instead of just looking back on past data and just past indicators saying, all right, what already happened? We are looking into the future and saying, what is most likely to happen for the rest of the day? And that's huge. You know, machine learning is used by a ton of major corporations. It's a subset of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, AI or artificial intelligence is we're used by pretty much all major companies the military and it, it, it's very practical and we have uh, machine learning integrated right into the bot so it's a huge update so make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video and in this video uh, i'm going to cover the small updates first and then i'm going to cover the bigger updates closer to the end of the video and i'm also going to be going how to use the bot like in, in a in a practical sense you know we could talk about all these features but the main thing is putting those features uh like into action you know so we're gonna be talking about that at the end of the video too so let's get right into the video and we could see that the first three features have already been added into the bot so the first one is each list with the bot is now grouped alphabetically and basically what this will do is it makes it so much easier to figure out how many callouts each stock has for each minute. So it just makes everything so much more organized and easier to read. And it was a small fix, but I think it'll uh, definitely go a long way. The next thing is the bot speed. So the bot actually had a huge speed increase. Uh, we updated the servers and, and gave it more uh, power, you could say. So the bot's a lot faster and there's less lag in between each alert. And then the last little minor thing is in bot 1.0, there used to be a little tab right here, just like a little field that said weeklies, right? And basically it just indicated that the underlying option was a weekly option, but uh, it was pretty much, there was really no major use for it. So we took it out just to make the user experience just a lot better. So those are the minor fixes. And now let's get into what everyone's watching this video for. So uh, the machine learning model and the counter. So uh, the first thing is the counter. So we can see that there is a counter in or attached to the bot that counts. There's two fields. There are the most popular symbols for the day and the most popular symbols for the hour. And this is very, very valuable. Now, what we well, what I've noticed is um, typically what happens is when a stock is on the most popular symbols tab, you know, after the first hour or two of the day, it normally tends to stay there. So this tab will obviously let everyone know how many, how many times the underlying stock has been called out so far for the day. And it pretty much shows everyone what the hot stocks are uh, for each day in a very easy, uh, easy, easy uh, format, you could say, you know, you don't have to go digging through past plays and count how many times each stock has been alerted. Everything's done for you and it's updated and it looks nice. Now, the next thing is the most popular symbols this hour. And I think this is extremely practical. Now, let's say, well, what I've noticed in, in the back testing is if you see most popular symbols for the hour, it really just tells you what's starting to move now because most popular symbols so far for today, um, yes, it, it gives you great data, 
but it also it, it lags a bit of it lags a little bit it's not like it, it predicts the future it analyzes the past which gives you great information um, but the most popular symbols for the hour the the, the data is more updated you could say so uh, what I've noticed is and we're gonna get into the strategy a little bit later in this video uh, just just to know right now the most popular symbols for the hour it can be great for like trades right now and like I said we'll get more into the strategy behind that a little bit later in this video but now I want to get into the machine learning model so um, the machine learning model is kind of like the the star of the show for this update uh, it's very hard to build and it's uh, it's definitely useful so uh, basically we integrated a machine learning model directly into the bot so you know every time a play is Hosted by the bot, it's ran through this machine learning model, and there's an output given for which stocks the model thinks is best. Not like not for the best that already happened today. The model looks at what's best for the rest of the day, so it looks into the future. So we're going to look at this model um, in one second. So we could see while we look at the model, there are ten plays posted every minute. Okay, and you can see that there's colors next to each play, and we're going to get into those colors in a second. Um, but basically what this model does machine learning model it takes all of the data that it had so far up to that day and all of the data it was trained on and it uses that experience and it, it it gives its own prediction on what stocks it thinks will be the best for the rest of the day and the higher the stock is on the list the more likely the bot thinks that the uh that the play will be called out for the rest of the day now, just because a stock is higher on the list, like for example, just because AMD is higher than DIS, that does not mean that the bot thinks that there will be more AMD calls for the rest of the day. It just thinks it's more likely to, to uh, be continued out for the rest of the day. So don't confuse the top of the list with a uh, number of call outs. Uh, it, the top of the list um, is all about probability. So the higher it is on the list, the more likely that the underlying stock will be called out for the rest of the day. So now let's get into the colors behind the bot. Um, so like I said, the, the how the model ranks it in terms of probability, not necessarily the number of call outs, but we can see when we look on this, uh, there are yellow, green, purple, and red squares. And each square has a different meaning. Uh, the yellow square means that if there's a yellow square, it means that like AMD is in the same spot on the list right now as it was on the previous list. So like for example, if AMD was ranked number one on the, on the list right here, and it's ranked number one again, it, it gets a yellow square, it's in the same spot. Uh, when there's green, it means that the underlying stock is ranking higher compared to the previous list. If there is a red dot, it means that the stock is ranking lower to the previous list. So, and then a purple square just means that it's new to the list. So. In simple, easy to understand terms, uh, yellow means all right. This this stock held its ground. It's still it, it's ranked the same. You know, it didn't the the rankings didn't really change. Green means hey, uh, the bot's starting to like it more. The red means hey, the bot it, it likes it. You know, it's in the top ten, but it didn't like it as much as it did a couple minutes ago. And the purple means hey, um, this stock just came on my radar and I really like it. So that's how it works. And we're going to get into the strategies in this in like one minute, uh, but I just want to explain totally how it works. So the main updates to 2.0 are the counter and the machine learning model, which is right here, right with the with the color rankings. Now let's get into the strategy part because look at these tools are great. And you know, this model is going to get smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter over time, just like a person, because um, for those of you who don't really know too much about uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning, uh, basically the more data, the more experience that the bot gets, the smarter it gets. It's kind of artificial intelligence is kind of learning like how people do. So um, basically the more experience it gets, the smarter it gets. It's not like it's going to be thinking the same uh, in two months from now than how it's thinking right now. Like in two months from now, its intelligence is going to significantly increase. So the way that I like to use everything, and this is just my personal preference. There's so many different ways to use this, but my personal preference is I like to look at the open, right? I like to, I like to look right when the market opens. Let's say we look at, I don't know, Microsoft intraday. 
normally what I've noticed is there, is there are one to three stocks that are just like really moving right at open, you know? Uh, like for Friday's example, Uber was one of those plays. There were a couple, but Uber was one of them. We could see right from the open, uh, Uber had just a lot of momentum, right? Had a lot of momentum, had some big green candles, and it just, it, it was running up, right? It's, it's as simple as that. It's just running up and it has a lot of momentum. So what I like to do is I like to find one to three different stocks that are just really moving uh, so far for the day. And I just like to take advantage of the, like the, the giant like mass wave of buyers or sellers for that stock. So for example, we could see Uber, it was shooting up. There was a ton of people buying the stock, it was shooting up. So basically what I like to do is ride this wave. There are two ways to do this. One, if you catch it early enough, right? Um, you can just get in right when it's initially starting to run up and you can get out pretty quickly. Normally, I like to get I like to get in and out for around 10% uh, profit or 10% loss, right? It just depends on the scenario. It's not like I have uh, like exactly 10% profit or 10% loss. It's just like a, like a ballpark estimate. And basically, uh, if you can get in the stock right when it's moving up, like let's say you got in, um, I don't know, like right around here, or like if you can get in like in the middle of this candle or like right here, um, then, then, then that's great, right? But let's say you missed right when the stock started to run up. That's totally okay. There's another entry. So what I like to do is I like to find one to three stocks that are really moving, okay? You find the stocks. If you can catch them on their first move up or down, that's great. Take your profits and run. But let's say you can't catch them on that first move. What you do is you draw a box or a trend or, or a support and resistance, anything to just mark out the area. So you can see that I highlighted um, the two or the three areas for everyone to easily see in this video. Uh, the first one, actually, let me go into a minute chart just to make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. So if we go onto a minute chart right here, we can see that this. This first hand box or it, it like separates the initial uptrend, right? We can see the gray box shows the consolidation and the, the second pink box shows the second uptrend. Normally what happens is when you pick that stock that uh, has a ton of momentum so far at the open, it'll run up, consolidate, and run up again. And the same thing for the downside. It'll fall, consolidate, and fall again. So if you missed the first initial run up, just draw a box of where the resistance is or just a draw a box of the consolidation. In Uber's case, the resistance was right around $43.74. Right when it starts to break out above that level, you can just ride it for the second uptrend. Personally, that's what I like to do. I like to take small losses and small profits. And over time, um, it, it works well. And basically, what this strategy allows is you don't have to trade um, for four hours of the day. Like really, it's really the open, really. Like if, if you do it right, you really only trade for like the first hour, maybe hour and a half of the market open. That's how I like to play it. Um, I've noticed in the beta test group that a lot of people also like to trade, um, also like to trade uh, like the ticks up. So for example, in the machine learning model, we can see that the AMD calls yellow, VIX puts yellow, DIS calls uh, yellow, and then we have TSM and LVS calls are green. Basically what that means in the bot's language is the bot is starting to like TSM and LVS better than it did a couple minutes ago, right? So what people like to do is if they see a green box, if they, like they were calling it ladder jumps, you could say, uh, if they see the green box next to the underlying play, uh, some people like that uh, as like a day trade. Um, so there's a lot of different strategies behind it. Um, another thing is like for the most part, right? Now there's, like I said, it's for the most part, not always. If you pick the plays that are most popular, like within like the first hour or like hour and a half of the market open, normally those same plays continue to be the most popular for the rest of the day. So like, for example, let's say, um, or even if you just use like the, the most popular symbols this hour, um, if you just pick like some of the most popular symbols, those, these symbols are the ones that have just the, the most power and momentum with them. Like we could see AMD, right? It was at, it finished at the top of the list, AMD calls. We look at AMD calls. If you bought an AMD call, basically any point throughout the day, you would have been up. I mean, it, it closed at 
at, at highs throughout the day. Like if you bought a call at any point throughout the day, you would have finished up, right? You know, it's the most popular symbol. Um, you could also look at, let's say, VIX puts, right? If we look at VXX puts, VXX, it pretty much fell all day long. If you bought a put at pretty much any point throughout the day, you would have been up. Let's look at it again. If we look at CVS calls, now this is where the rule, there were, there's an exception. CVS, it had a powerful, huge run up throughout the day, right? Huge run up from market open to about the middle of the day, right? But we can see that towards the end of the day, CVS started to pull back, okay? Now, at the same time, we remember that the uh, most popular symbols, AMD and VIX, uh, those, those symbols were working great, right? Uh, they were the most popular symbols and they finished up. But CVS was also a most popular symbol, but it, it ended up pulling back throughout the day. So CVS could have been a great trade if you caught it early enough. But let's say you didn't. This is why we have the most popular symbols for this hour. AMD, VIX, AMD calls, VIX puts. If you bought those at any point throughout the day, you would have uh, finished up, right? You, you would have pretty much made money if you bought at any point throughout the day. Same thing with VIX. And now let's look at the BABA calls. BABA, if you bought at basically any point throughout the day, you would have been up. So the main thing, the main lesson here is most popular symbols. If you trade these, uh, for the most part, uh, you're, you're most likely going to win if you trade these. However, you just have to be careful because not every single most popular symbol will finish up for the rest of the day, but most of them will. And this is where I come into my point of, look at the bot works great. The machine learning model, it, 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 it's great right now and it's gonna get smarter and smarter over time. The counter, it's a great tool, right? The bot's very fast now. And, and like the main point is that yes, like these, the bot is a tool, it's a great tool, but at the end of the day, uh, risk management is more important than anything in the bots a tool it's not a a human being you know like for example like if you see cvs calls being called out like in the most popular symbol and you see cvs tanking then obviously it wouldn't be a good buy but if you see for example um amd vix and baba being called out and they're constantly breaking new highs small pullbacks break new high small pullback break new high that that's a great signal uh, same thing with vix and then baba so there's just like a little bit of, um, just understand that, that the bot, it works great. It's a great tool. The machine learning model is great, but ultimately, no matter what you do, you always have to reference the charts and risk management is more important than anything. Um, depending on what your strategy depends on where your stop loss should be. So for example, I like to take just around 10% loss, 10% profit for the day trades. That's my personal preference. Some people like to do trailing stops. Some people like to do like set uh, stop levels. So like for example, let's say they buy an option that's $200. They might put a stop at let's say $30, right? And, and then, um, you know, it's a trailing stop. Some people like to use percentages. Some people like to stop out based on if the stock can break the support or resistance. Like there's a lot of variables, but no matter what, uh, you should not let uh, your losses get too big because that can ruin everything. You know, like I would say a loss no bigger than maybe 40 or 50 percent but it depends on your strategy like if you're holding out for 200 percent then you might have to have a 50 percent stop loss or or 70 percent stop loss um but the main thing is risk management is more important than anything uh the development team and i put a lot of time and a lot of it, it was very hard to to integrate a machine learning model into this bot but uh, it, it works great and it's gonna get smarter over time but the most important thing is risk management is more important than anything and uh, yeah, that's the main thing. I mean, over time, I'm going to add a channel of, of just like a little strategy guide. I'm actually going to add a channel today um, uh, of like how to use the bot to its fullest potential in the Discord chat. And, um, you know, there's a lot of great things, but risk management is more important than anything else. Uh, hopefully you guys like uh, version 2.0 of the bot and I'm very excited for 3.0. So uh, we're always adding new things to the bot and uh, feedback is very highly valued from you guys. A lot of you guys requested uh, the alphabetical order and we got that done. And a lot of people re um, in the beta test group requested the ranking system and we got that done. So uh, feedback is very valued. So thank you guys for everyone who's providing the feedback. 
We really appreciate it. And we're just going to continue to improve this bot over time. And especially with machine learning, it's just going to get smarter and smarter over time. So if you guys want to try out this bot, you can click the stocked up options alerts link in the description down below. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.